Thank you, Catherine and Bridget. I'm grateful to you, the selection committee, and the DC Bar for this award. I also want to thank the friends and colleagues who organized my nomination or wrote letters in support of it. Stephen Preston, Bob Taylor, and Chuck Allen at the Department of Defense. Rich Gross at the Joint Chiefs of Staff. Mary McLeod at the State Department. Caroline Kras at the Central Intelligence Agency. Bob Litt at the Office of the Director of National Intelligence. Brian Egan at the National Security Council. And Carl Thompson at the Department of Justice's Office of Legal Counsel. Above all, I need to thank my wife, Kim, and our sons, Ethan and Sam. Kim's love and support over many years have kept me on my feet so that tonight I'm able to stand at this podium to accept this award. This award is meaningful to me partly because I come from a family of government lawyers. My dad worked at the Department of Justice for 25 years, ending up in, in, as uh, the chief of the legislation and special projects section in the criminal division. Laws that he drafted and the executive branch, branch proposed to Congress are still on the books. My brother, a revered deputy general counsel at the Department of Defense, won the Rosenberg Award in 2011. This, this award is a monumental honor. Apparently, however, you can be the third best government lawyer in one immediate family and still win it. <laughs> Thank heaven mom didn't go to law school. <laughs> I'm especially pleased to receive this award on the same night that Jim Sandman is honored, and not just because of Jim's luminous career. In the 1970s, Jim and I each clerked for Judge Max Rosen of the U.S. Court of Appeals for the Third Circuit. And we thus started out as lawyers with Judge Rosen's generosity and humanity as an example. B. Rosenberg, for whom this award is named, was a colleague of my dad's at the Justice Department. I expect I will be among the last winners of this award who might be able to draw upon personal recollections of her. During summers when I was in high school and college, I had jobs downtown. And if schedules permitted, I met my dad at the end of the day and got a ride home. Sometimes, while I was in dad's office, B. Rosenberg would stop by to talk. She was, as I recall, tough-minded, completely without egotism, and joyful about the law. She could be clinical, indeed merciless, in dealing with an assertion or an argument. But I saw that when a colleague of hers had convinced a court to adopt a creative legal theory, she showed her pleasure by carrying around the slip opinion as if she were an Academy Award winner with an Oscar. <laughs> I am honored to receive an award that bears her name. Unlike B. Rosenberg, I'm not a litigator. The office in which I work gives legal advice, frequently about issues illustrating Holmes' remark that certainty is generally illusion, and repose is not the destiny of man. Along with these issues have come two great privileges. The first is to have worked in this office with men and women whose talents have been an inspiration and whose friendships have sustained me. The second, the inestimable privilege I have shared with them and with others in the Department of Justice and in general counsel offices throughout the executive branch is to have been allowed some part in guiding the government that the people of the United States made more than 200 years ago that to this day takes its authority from their consent and that they have bound and enabled.